This distribution is based on Fedora, and it just came out recently. I decided to have a quick look at this. We are talking about Corora 19 right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. I had an opportunity to try out both the cinnamon and this of course that you're seeing here is the mate edition and uh, I decided I'd do a review on the uh, mate edition um, simply because I was having a few little problems with the cinnamon version uh, I'm not sure why but it is what it is uh, now uh, something for those of you who are new to Linux the installer uh, can be a little bit confusing because you will be using the installer to set up your own partitions and I'm not going to be covering that in today's show uh, but I have this installed and let's have a look at this uh, this is a great distribution for those of you who do like the RPM based distros and uh, this is based on Fedora but uh, they included some pretty cool little applications with this, as you'll see. If you look at the uh, lower right corner of the screen, you will see that there are four desktops to choose from. And then on the lower left corner of the screen, uh, you will see a little icon that will let you collapse all windows and show the desktop. On the upper right corner of the screen, uh, you will see that you have the clock. You also have a battery indicator, your network connectivity control, a volume control, uh, language, and of course drivers. On the upper left portion of the screen, we'll go into uh, things that you get with this. Uh, I just wanted to mention on the top row, you have uh, a quick uh, launch to Pigeon. You have Claws email, uh, Firefox quick, lo quick launch, the Mate or Mate terminal, and of course, your uh, Kaja file browser. In applications, under accessories, this comes with Compiz pre-installed. Great for those of you who love the eye candy by uh, pressing uh, Compiz Mate Emerald. This will launch Compiz with uh, the Emerald window borders. And of course, uh, if you launch Compiz Mate GTK, this will use a Metacity window border with uh, Compiz. Okay, you can manage your disk drives and media. You can uh, use a virtual keyboard on the screen. Great for those of you uh, who have difficulty with a keyboard and you just want to use a mouse to do your typing. I've done that sometimes myself. Okay, you also uh, have the Emerald Decorator here. You get an Archive Manager, G Note. This GTK Decorator icon will disable Compiz. Now, it is a known um, issue that Compiz no longer works in a virtual environment. Otherwise, I would be demonstrating uh, this on the screen for you. Unfortunately, if I enable them, the whole screen goes black. And hopefully, that's something VirtualBox will eventually fix. Okay, you get a calculator with this, a character map. You get your own desktop your, your cloud a desktop sync client, you get a text editor, you can search for files, take a screenshot, and then of course the lightweight XF burn, which happens to be my favorite disk burner, uh, simply because of its simplicity, and I've never had it make any rejects. So always nice to see this, usually with a desktop like this, they'll include uh, another uh, disk burner. Now, they thought about everything where graphics is concerned because uh, now you've got a number of utilities available to you. So for those of you who uh, have a little bit of uh, talent, you know, and like to mess around with graphics, it's got some stuff in here for you. Uh, so you get um, a document viewer, the image, I have made image viewer, you get the GIMP. You also get Inkscape, which is great for vectored and scalable. Blah, 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 blah. Let me try and say that again. Scalable vector graphics. Uh, you get Library Office Draw, Raw Therapy, Shotwell, and Simple Scan. So they thought up some pretty nice things to include with this. In Internet, you get a number of really cool applications with this. You get the Clause Mail, as mentioned before, Deluge, which happens to be my personal favorite BitTorrent client. Uh, I think it's uh, the best one for me personally. Some people will argue the transmission's better, but hey, if you don't like this one, try something else. You get the Ikiga Softphone, FileZilla for all of your FTP needs. 
Firefox, GNOME, RDP. What does that do? Oh, remote desktop client. <laughs> I think I need to have more coffee, huh? Okay, you get Gwibber. You get HexChat, which is a fork of XChat IRC. I use this myself. I think it's pretty cool. You get, uh, you can download and view live video feeds with, uh, Liferia. I'm gonna have to try that one. Pigeon Instant Messenger. And then, of course, Tiger VNC for those of you who need VNC for, uh, remotely viewing, uh, your, uh, your other, um, computers, mobile devices, that sort of thing. VNC is the way to go. All right. In Office, you get the full LibreOffice suite, a project management tool, a dictionary, and of course, uh, an FB reader for um, reading your ebooks. Uh, and other, just the Corora welcome screen. Hmm, maybe they should have put that somewhere else. And Sound and Video, you get Audacity for editing all of your audio. I use that program myself. Awesome tool. I even have one or two tutorials on uh, my channel here for this. <coughs> You get Handbrake, which uh, transcodes all of your uh, media files into other formats. You get the OpenShot video editor, great for beginners who are just coming into Linux that want to have an entry-level uh, video editor. This is a pretty cool program to use, and it is my understanding they are working to make this cross-platform, so it will also eventually work on uh, Windows and OS X. So, and I'd like to see what's going to be happening with this, but this, of course, isn't their latest uh, version uh, that... Uh, that they're working on. It's still being worked on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get the Pulse Audio Volume Control Rhythm Box, a sound converter, a sound juicer, the VLC media player, and, of course, XF Burn. It's funny how they put all that stuff in many different places. System tools for uh, tweaking a uh, number of things. Uh, you can launch the Compass Fusion icon, which gives you a quick launch to changing your... Uh, window managers and that sort of thing. Automatic bug reporting tool. You get a live USB creator. Yeah! Great for all of you distro hoppers out there. Okay, you get the mate system monitor and a bunch of other things. You even get the SE Linux uh, troubleshooter and a policy generation tool. So for those of you who are security minded, uh, you might want to check those out. You get, uh, you get an on-screen keyboard. Quick launch to all of your places here. And then, of course, all of your preferences. Tweak your system to your liking. You can make this your own. Uh, pretty cool indeed. Administration tools. And uh, of interest is the Yum Extender. You'll use this if you want a graphical application to install applications on this because this is an RPM-based distro. You also have a quick launch to your control center here. Okay, and then about, and then your logout dialogues and that sort of thing. Uh, when we go into right-clicking on the desktop and changing the desktop background, uh, pretty much you'll see here, you get a bunch of really cool wallpapers to choose from. And then in themes, there's also a bunch of themes that are included with this as well. So this is a customizer's dream come true, and that's one thing I really liked about GNOME 2. And Mate brings this to us again, as this is a fork of GNOME 2. And so you can do some pretty cool things. You can change your themes and give this a look uh, that may be a little bit more appealing to you. There we go. I think that looks kind of cool. So all in all, I like what I see here. Uh, the installer, probably not as newbie friendly uh, because... You know, you'll have to go through a few little hoops. doesn't automatically uh, set up those uh, partitions for you. You're going to have to really read into setting up the partitions. Now, I'm using uh, uh, LVM in this instance here, and uh, not quite as easy as the Ubuntu installer is. So just something to keep in mind, you know, that you may want to use the manual tool for managing your partitions. It's not overly difficult, but... Somebody coming over from the Windows side, jumping onto this one, I recommend 
maybe going with Ubuntu based distro first that's really easy for beginners to use but after you've been on a distribution like that for a while then you can move over to a distribution such as this I like what I see here very well thought out very well put together um, a nice array of applications are pre-selected for you with this distribution and if you think this is something you might like this may be well worth your time checking out mm -hmm.